Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Great Awakening Generator. I am your host, Rose McNair, and we are doing the Dr. Darek series. Hello, Darek. Hey, Rose. Hey, everyone. <laughs> welcome, and thank you. Um, yeah, how have you been? Uh, good, good. I've just, um, I'm not sure if I should, we, this might upset some people. We've just had a, a killed a beast just yesterday, so I'm just coming out of bucket loads of suet and hearts and kidneys and okay. beef cheeks and all sorts of things. And right. um, it's uh, <laughs> just all part of life, isn't it? Yeah, it's sustainable living, isn't it? <laughs> It's sustainable yeah. living, and and of course, honor to the uh, to the beast that is given its life, indeed. And, and uh, you know, and and you're using every part of it, so in that in itself is honor. So it sounds like you're making suet and all of that, and who makes suet these days, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm using it to make pemmican, which is a red Indian um, traditional uh, survival food. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And what what is it made of? Uh, just a dried beef, like topside, de cut it thinly, and then uh, so slice it and put it in the dehydrator. Okay. Uh, put it through the blender so it turns into fine powder, and add salt to it, and then uh, add the suet. The when it, the boiled suet, so when it's um, rendered down into the liquid fat, then put that in and put it into a tray, and and it just. Um, settles down and then you bag it and it's good for 25 years apparently but mine haven't lasted that long no i'm sure not <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't wait 25 years to eat all my all that food <laughs> sounds good really sounds good yeah so Derek, today we're talking about fear yeah we are yeah and um it's part of that journey uh because we talked about guilt last week yes yes and i wanted to start it with this quote from my book if we can figure out how to be innocent humans and treat each other as such. So that means we treat each other as innocent people, being around innocent people. If we can do that, we might just approximate divinity and come to circle its orbit. Wow. Realizing that um, that's, that's the process, is if we can get the guilt being the final frontier, the last bridge we have to cross um, to come to that level of innocence, and to come to who we truly are and circle them because there's a greater being that we're all circling, like the earth circles the sun. Yes. <clears throat> and, um, but, you know, so the idea, that's the game is to do that, but on the way we have to face our fears. Yes. Very profound, yeah. very profound what you just said there. <laughs> yeah, there's some profound thoughts come through. So, um, yeah. I, sometimes when I repeat them, I think, gosh, that, that's a good thing to contemplate. Yeah, definitely and a that, good thing to come to contemplate. Yeah. Go on. And I, I used to, um, when I was thinking, well, actually, when I was thinking of talking about this, I've been, <clears throat> you know, reading my notes and the book that I've written, uh, the chapter on fear. And it's, it's almost like our personal fears over the little last few years have taken a back seat. It's like, sure. What's happening now is really major global fears. And it's such a part of our consciousness that almost thinking about personal fears is irrelevant these days. Yes, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, I was thinking about this when you, when I was reading your notes on it so that we could, so I could be ready for today. And mm. I was thinking about exactly that. I was thinking like, what do I fear huh. anymore? What do I fear? Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> Where's that fear thing? You know, like, oh, I, I'm just like, it's gone. It's yeah, not yeah. gone necessarily. I've just not paid any attention to a lot of those things. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if other people are still feeling personal fears. Um, and I, I remember way back in the 80s, books like um, Gerald Jampolsky, Love is Letting Go Fear, and um, Susan Jeffers, um, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. You know, yeah. books like that were out, and we're all learning to deal with personal fears. But it seems like the 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 amount of propaganda and indoctrination we've had about the things we're supposed to be globally afraid of, you know, climate, um, you know, climate mainly, but then COVID, and um, then there's the race issue and all that kind of stuff. That they're really being pushed in our faces, and our minds have been molded to really focus on those. Yeah, and so we really need to see 
see it for what it is, a massive manipulative game. Yes, and, yes, indeed. And that's, that's where we need to all take responsibility for what we feel in terms of fear. Yes. And uh, I was listening to somebody, you know, there was someone on, on um, a climate person, I think they were, they had someone in front of them that made them, that they were terrified given that yes. what the person represented but they couldn't they couldn't um deal with their own fear you know it's like that other person had to stop doing what they were doing so that they weren't afraid wow and that's that's where any any feeling we feel we need to take personal responsibility for and it's it's, it's our it's our fear to deal with and you know, two people can face the same situation and feel something completely different. So just because you're feeling afraid doesn't mean to say it's anyone's responsibility other than our own. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just think it's such an important aspect to be talking about in current times, mm. given everything that is going on. And I don't want to, um, I want to let you carry on talking about what you want to tell us before I bring, mm. uh, I, I talk about current times. I'm going to bring that in the end. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go on. So I I talk about the small M mind and the big M mind. Yes. And Explain so, that so, small M and big M yeah. to us for our audience, please. Yeah. Well, the small M mind is our own personal, you know, me and my little body. <laughs> this is this is what I'm shit scared about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. my personal fears. And um and then there's the big M mind, which is um that part of us that's connected to our divinity. And we can we can access both of those, and it's if, uh, one one way to look at it is if um if you have a blank bit of paper, and say that's your consciousness. If you wrote the word fear on it in big black letters, you've written on the paper, but you haven't touched the you haven't affected the paper. So say if you had an eraser that could take that fear the letters fear away, then all of a sudden you've still got the paper. Mm. Yeah. So in that, in that sense, our, our small M fears, uh, that, that's what was written over the top of that white bit of paper. And, uh, and they can be erased, and that can be erased simply. And then you find out they're not really real. And what we tend to do is think our fears are real. And then what we get into is this other idea of, um, <clears throat> uh, where have we got it, is that um, our fear of our fear actually keeps us looking for how to avoid the thing we fear. Yes. So we begin to see fear as a savior. And that can lead to a lot of problems. You know, fear, if you're, I remember once we, <laughs> in medical school, there's a bunch of med bright medical students decided to walk through a tunnel just north of Dunedin, a, a, rain, a tra train tunnel. And uh, we thought it would just be a fun thing to do on because we were walking the beach and yeah. saw the tunnel. Oh, let's just walk through it. Ah. And um, partway through it, I started to feel a bit ominous, and I didn't know quite what. But I, you now you see those Western movies where they put their ear to the railroad track yes, to yes. a train coming, and I did that, and I wasn't quite sure. But sure enough, there was a train coming, oh, and wow. we got caught in the tunnel. And one of our friends um, froze on the tracks. Oh. I was too far back to actually, uh, too far away from her to, to reach her in time, but someone had to literally jump and rip her off the tracks. Wow. Uh, she would have been gone. And, um, but so that whole thing where fear can have a positive impact, like there's that whole thing of um, a, like a gradient, I think I've talked about it on other, t other emotions, that we, the, it's not positive or negative. We tend to think of the things called negative emotions as yes. something bad. Yep. But they're just an emotion, and how we relate to it is is what it becomes. And so fear can actually be a, a good warning. Like I was experiencing, like when I put my my ear to the tr uh, railroad track, I was experiencing, oh, there's something not quite right here. I was experiencing a degree of fear. And uh, that fear helped us to move out of the way in time. Yeah, and yeah. my other friend's fear that he was about to lose his friend, and leading him to jump on the tracks and whip her off them mm -hmm. uh, was his. That's that's what you call a big M fear. That's yeah. I need to do something here. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. But wow. the, 
and so for some people the fear is just um catastrophic they just she was frozen to the spot mm. <clears throat> and um uh oh. and I, our, you know in terms of our own fear i always remember a nightmare i used to have of being um scared of something in a room behind a door and i knew that if i opened that door that thing was going <laughs> to leap out and devour yeah. me <laughs> And that night we went, went on for a long time, just coming and going. And um, and then eventually I read something someday that uh, rooms and in, in a, a room and a dream represents just a part of your mind you're afraid of. Okay. And I can deal with that. I can. So then I thought, well, next time I have that dream, I'll open the door because I know that's nothing to be. I want to see what I'm, what I'm actually afraid of. Yeah. <laughs> and um it took me a while to get, have a dream again, and it took me a few dreams before I could actually be conscious enough to open the door. And it was amazing because there was nothing there. <laughs> nice. That is such an easy way to do it, right? Yeah, it's yeah. such an easy way to do it, <clears throat> and sometimes the answers are just right there. We just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we just overthink it maybe, and then we, we have unnecessary fears and trepidation about things. Yeah. Um, mm, yeah. Good. And, uh, the moral for there was that I didn't have to let go of all of the fear to open the door. Because often people think, oh, they need to let go of their fear before they can do something. I just needed to have some awareness of it. That was all. Yeah. I could say I, I could let go of a little bit of it because all of a sudden I'm not afraid of the big, big boogie, boogie monster. But at the same time, I'm now I'm aware there's a fear there that I need to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. I can look at it without, you know, running away. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, <clears throat> uh, so that's where fear, fear can be. It needs to be our, our responsibility to deal with, and we need to know that there is actually nothing to fear. Yeah. Course of Miracles uh, quote is uh, fear is not justified in any form. And so it's useful to get you to act in certain situations, but otherwise, as an eternal being, there's nothing that can touch us. Yeah. So, and it's about getting that perspective on it that until, you, until I get a sense that I'm an eternal being, then I can be scared of everything. Mm. And a lot of what we are used in the moment that scares us is the whole thing around the fear of death. You know, fear of yeah. death dying and whether that's from <laughs> being boiled to death on the planet because it's boiling now, it's not just warming. That's right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're just having to, they're just getting so rampant, they're having to ramp up the the propaganda to actually to capture us, you know. It's like, you know, you got to get this, guys, it's boiling. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. It's yeah. the level of insanity is becoming so obvious <laughs> that hopefully more and more people are getting it. Um, yeah, I'm hoping that too. And I do believe that more people are getting to realize the fear. I had a few conversations with people on, in fact, on Monday, I had these two people that I spoke to whom I thought would never be able to have such a conversation with me. But mm. they were telling me stuff that's happening in the world that uh, that is not true and uh, and uh, what's going on with the governments and whatever. And I was like, okay, welcome to my world. <laughs> that is great. That is great. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's good. It's happening. I think it's happening. Yeah, and if we can pop it off that we all can see the emperor without any clothes on, then I think we have a chance. Yeah. And to do that before we get censored out of re reality would be good. Yes, indeed. Um, but the way it's fear is being driven is that if you, you see it in the climate um, emergency idea, that we think because we're we need to be afraid of the climate, and that fear then becomes a savior because it's going to make us do things that we need to do. Yeah. Like like Greta, um, I once heard Greta Greta Thunberg pronounce her own name, and it was more like Greta Thunberg. So well, the G was a, like a Y. Hmm. So okay. it's just part of that Swedish, right? It's part, it's, they they do funny things with language, Maria. Um. Yeah. They they uh, yeah. She is Swedish, or she's not Norwegian. She's Swedish. Yeah. yeah. And my my um my uh, sister in law is a um is a Swedish, and uh, 
she 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 teaches you how to how to spell uh, how to pronounce things in Swedish. Okay, <laughs> it's different I... other way that looks like. Yeah. So, but Greta Thunberg, she um, she was famous for saying that uh, I want you to feel the fear that I feel, and I want you to panic, and that's what we're being driven to do, right across the board, mm. and um. There's another part we we taught to be angry. Some some elements of our society are taught to be angry, and um, I'll cover that more next week. But um, that whole thing where we're taught to be afraid that we need to be afraid in order to act. Because if we don't, if we're not afraid, we won't act. And we won't save ourselves. Or we and won't pay attention, right? Or we won't pay attention to what they're saying if we're not afraid. Yeah, and then we won't. We'll, we'll all die. <laughs> yeah, we'll all die. <laughs> a little boil and uh but the idea that's the idea that they're trying to get us to, they're trying to manipulate fear in us to then you make make us the saviors and we get caught up in what i call the savior complex which is that we try to we try to make everybody then do do the same thing so that's how we drive the whole agenda for you know climate change we we believe the lies and we actually are going to, I thought about this just yesterday, that um, the governments that got rid of slavery, the Western governments got rid of slavery, are actually doing everything they can to bring slavery back, where they yeah. will enslave the whole of humanity. And yeah. that's where I say we actually have something bigger to fear. This, they want to make us afraid to use our fear and, and use up our, basically the, it's almost like they're using up our fear energy. So that's all we can be afraid of. And then yes. and then part of that whole idea of fear being a savior, where it actually will um, help you avoid, try to make you avoid the thing you're afraid of, is when you really start to think of the manipulation that's happening and the, the whole control towards a one world government where they'll basically be digital slaves, that's actually a bigger fear. And a lot of people aren't really willing to face that because because they're, we're, if we're afraid of fear, it's okay to be afraid of things that we can see and think we can do something of or with. Yes. Yeah, I can do something in climate. You know, I'm <laughs> some, <laughs> some, I have some megalomaniac idea about myself that I can actually stop the climate. <laughs> that's, that's really, that's really, you've lost humility at that point. If you, if you Definitely. <laughs> and, um, but we'd rather deal with that because that's an easier feel to deal with, fear to deal with than the fear that shit there are actually people out there that are out to get me and yes. they're doing a damn good job and they've been educating the public for decades and they have them eating it out of their hands and the media is right in the ball game and the governments are right in the ball game and you know there's no real difference in the parties and they're all really talking the, the UNWEF agenda we do have I don't know if you saw it, but the United Nations Association of New Zealand, headed up by um, Dr. Sir Ashley Bloomfield, was doing a meeting in Wellington and at Parliament um, in September. Yes. You know, so we can we can no longer say that the UN WEF partnership to to accelerate the 2030 agenda, where we basically cripple our financial lives and our economic lives. And uh, even what we eat will change, given to what these un unelected, you know, um, what do you call them? Some people call them predators, the unelected predators um, using their big companies. And then they come into this public private partnership, whereas the public puts up the money and they're allowed to express their ideas. We're not allowed to express ours. And they use the use our money to basically fool us, propagandize us, indoctrinate us, and enslave us. Yes. And if that isn't something to be afraid of, honestly afraid of, then I'm not sure what is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um and at the same time, we can as much as we can take responsibility for doing what we think we can do about it. We can't take full responsibility in the sense of um, this is something I've, I've failed in for a past a few years. Is thinking, you know, I had to, I always had to do more, and never being happy with what I did. 
And so realizing that I can only do what I'm given to do. That's right. With yep. that deep listening. Yep. And, um, and then apart from that, it's life's about enjoying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not about struggling. It's no. not about saying I am responsible. So I need to suffer to make sure that somebody else is happy. Yeah. Uh, because I think for a long time we have done that. I even for me, I would sacrifice many things so that other people can have those things that I, you know, that they're lacking. Um, mm-hmm. I did it for people. I did it for animals. You know, I did it for the environment. Put sacrifice my myself or my way of life to be uncomfortable so that you know the earth can gain and the planet can gain and all that. I'm not saying that I'm. I'm not encourage. I am. Certainly not encouraging people to do things that are detrimental for the planet or other people or not help other people. But there comes a time where you need to look within yourself and make sure that just in your moment, in your spaces, that you're fine, you're happy right there. I think the last three years, was it forced us in the beginning to take care of our neighbor, our brother, our sister, uh, uh, whatever, you know, by... You know, we have that thing of responsibility in terms of the the pandemic. If you're not, if you are okay, make sure to do it for yourself, or for your neighbor, or your elderly parent, or your, you know, just just follow these rules because they need to be safe. Keep everyone safe. Um, now we've come to stage where I think in the esoteric world where we're starting to realize that self self is very important. Coming back to self and what is necessary. Uh, to make sure we're okay because when you make sure that you're okay and you're in the good space, then you can be anything else you need to be to someone else. You can be the better of yourself there. Yeah. Um, so slightly digress, but it's just a matter of, I understand what you're saying about you always want to do for other people. Yeah. Um, I think, I think part of your thing about making sure you're okay is also is part of that is making sure you're basing your, um, your, what you see, how you see the world on things that are true yes because yes. as i say the truth we can handle the truth it may hurt but we can handle it uh, everything else will drive us nuts yep yep <laughs> indeed and uh, and so part of what's no, what about knowing what the right thing to do is is knowing what's the right science and yep. i think we can almost say that if anything is a um what do they call it, a um, consensus science, then we know that's not true because science is never a consensus and there's been plenty of people speaking out against the the quoted uns consensus who are being shut down and censored and de, um, you know, their money, their funding taken away from them and all that stuff. So we can be pretty sure that anything that is told to us through the media that is consensus science agreement, that that is actually incorrect. Please explain consensus science to us like in ordinary terms please <laughs> well i use consensus you've heard of that term obama used it and either 97 percent of um scientists uh, say the that global warming is man-made and yes. dangerous he said and dangerous <laughs> and that was not what 97 percent of scientists said when you i've got a page on my website on uh, darigrenny.com and go to climate page and I, I break down some of the um the like there's a guy in australia somebody cook same surname as my wife and um i forget his first name but he he's he's the one that that famous quote came from and when he looked at it he had like something like he started with three thousand scientists and then he whittled them down to about 89 and then 87 of them did say that man-made global warming is an issue but he only he he basically cherry pick data he he basically got rid of like over 2000 scientists so it was over you know you could say that he took 90 percent of the papers and said no those don't count because they don't fit my parameters to what i'm looking for and you know so when, when you look into how how badly that they've come up with those figures and how you just can't imagine a real scientist would even think that that was accurate and it could be mm. used yeah but they use yeah. it to say that because most of the scientists agree, then um, but most of the scientists agree that CO two does cause does have an effect on global warming. Yes, it does. That's just that's a scientific fact. Whether it has an, a, a meaningful impact is the one they argue about. 
but then they pick out the ones that only agree with the yes, it's man-made and dangerous. Um, and you know, I always like them to go back to like Galileo and Copernicus. You know, the consensus science of the time was that the sun moved around the Earth. So consensus science is meaningless. It's just a and the, the the science that changes things goes against the consensus. And so the science is about finding our truth. And but we are we are we've had science be misused. The, the you there's a the forget her name, but she was with the, the United Nations. She said we own the science, meaning yes. and we want to tell people what it is. Yep. And um meaning that they funded the kind of science they want to prove what they need to prove in order to have you afraid the way they want you to be afraid to take the actions they want you to take. And it's all a bunch of BS just designed to control and enslave. Yes, and, that's um, true. And um, so if the, the, the more we can see that that's the thing we're dealing with, the more we can, the more we can face our fears the more we can actually give truth the chance to surface. Yes. You know, as, long, as long as you're lost in the, oh, my God, the planet's boiling, you'll never be able to look at the things that say, oh, excuse me, um, no, knock, knock. <laughs> Anyone yeah. home? Uh, have you read this? Have you seen that? It's like, have you heard that guy saying this? It's like there's so many, so much information out there that if you really could let go of the fear enough to look at it and pay attention to it, you'd realize, oh, I actually don't need to be afraid of that at all. No. So and then you go, oh dear, what I do need to be afraid of is this, you know, and this yeah. whole, whole move to control humanity. Yes. Hard to imagine that that's happening. But that's well, <laughs> and then, I can't. And then, it, just to finish that, that, that thought. And then, see, then if you don't appreciate your eternality, then you head into another, you just drop into another bucket of fears that are endless. Mm. Oh, they're mm. really going to get me. <laughs> well, <laughs> Ultimately, yeah. we have to we have to take our consciousness away from our bodies and our lives, and put it back to where it belongs, which is with the divinity within. Mm -hmm. There's that part of us we need to hang on to, and at that point, there is no reason to fear. Yes, there's no justification to fear, and but it, it, it's driving us all to that point. My wife's talking about this this uh, last week. That this the situation is driving us all to that point where we choose who we are and start yes. to live from that point of view. So live from that fearless state of being an eternal being. No yes. matter what goes on in the world or doesn't go on the world, then who are we showing up as at the moment? That's yes, the yes, that is the key. And that is very much what the journey is about, I'm finding at this point. Yeah. I just want to just, uh, this This is just coming back to Greta. I call her Greta Thunberg, but yeah. you've called her, her, by, her name. Yeah. <laughs> no, right. I really don't know. Um, I, 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 you know, when she had done that first speech at one of the UN meetings, at a UN meeting or something, I know that the baby boomers were very upset with her. Anybody who um had watched it had got the baby, you know, the the definitely her speech had got the baby boomers mm -hmm. right up. And um, you know, anybody that I knew that had watched it and was in that age category were like, how dare she speak to us like that? We've been here longer and we have done this. And so, so you know. The um, thing about what she was saying was taken in an offensive way because, but for different reasons, nothing to do with she was trying to put fear into us. It was more like, how did she talk, talk to us like that? She's only 16 or whatever age she was at the time, you know, so it was, it was pretty interesting to see that. But she was quite out there when in her speeches, and I think she has traveled many countries to do these speeches, to speak to people. I watched a documentary on, on her her life a little bit of what had happened to her post that speech and um the documentary showed that she was they her parents feared for her life because people were up against her for the fact that she was talking about climate what was happening to the planet and and how the, it was not going to be here for future generations and, thing, and things like that but now that i know what i know mm -hmm. i i really have to question where she comes from with that information and so much fear and so much grabbing the attention and 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 it, it stops me. I don't know enough about it, but it stops me to think, what is your platform? What is the platform you're coming from? Why are you doing this? You know, do you really feel like that? Have you been set up to do that? Um, 
I don't know, because I, I was actually concerned for her when I watched the documentary. I was concerned for her life because she's so young and she felt, and at that time I was ignorant and um, I did think the planet, I, I didn't think about it too much, but I thought, well, if people are saying the planet's in trouble, they must be, it must be true, um, you know, because that's what where I was, right, at the time. But, so I was concerned about her because her, uh, you know, there was one time they couldn't travel a certain way. They had to go on one of these boats they had to travel in the night. It was dangerous and all of that. And they had to, you know, they obviously had, there was a storm on its way and all of that out at sea. And so, yeah, her father, I think, was traveling around the world with her for her to do these, com these uh, to appear and speak and influence communities and societies in terms of the planet being in trouble. So, um, but now I don't know. I don't, I don't know about Greta Thunberg, who she works for and mm. if, if her platform is the right yeah, platform. Yeah. Uh, and I, yeah, I don't mean to be horrible or disrespectful for her work or anything like that. I just feel like knowing what I know now, I know that it's fear mongering is something that's not is not it's not divinely orchestrated. That information mm -hmm. is not divinely orchestrated orchestrated because it's causing fear. It's causing people to start to feel guilty or mend their ways, and we're taking the blame for something in some ways. Well, in a lot of ways, we're actually not responsible for 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 doing damage to the planet, the clear stuff, and all of that. And you know, so they can make more money. That's that's normally I, I'm going to have to say these are the people that are responsible yeah. for that. Yeah, the I companies. call them powers that shouldn't be. Um, the powers but, that shouldn't be. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not willing to give them the the um, the title of the powers that be. because. And thank you for sharing that. I might say that too in future. The yeah, powers yeah. that shouldn't be. And, uh, not the powers and, that be. Because the powers that be does does give them quite a bit does, of power. It does. And that, um, well, I'm not willing yeah. to give them that power anymore. Yeah, not at all. No way. And, um, but, you know, the thing with Greta, if, if your child is lost in a nightmare, what's the most effective thing you can do the most loving thing you can do i think the most like loving thing a person a parent could do is to make them feel secure make yeah. them feel okay yeah to to wake them sorry you're having a nightmare dear wake up yes it's like you're all okay i can comfort you it's all okay but in instead of that what uh greatest parents did was they helped her magnify the nightmare and use it as therapy for itself and it just mm. it, it's the whole world yeah it's a sad one because i understand that she might be neurodeficient no sorry i said the wrong word neurodivergent yeah well she's on the spectrum and um and, they understood that and mm -hmm. uh, and then the the education system and appearance as far as i'm concerned made it worse yeah and, and they used her they it's ostensibly for therapy for her because she looked like she was doing better when she was acting making taking actions okay okay but if, the act, but if the actions were the wrong actions to take and she was basing her whole fear on a bunch of lies that they should have been addressing that they you should see, have been you... sitting down saying Greta these people are lying to you yeah they're not telling you the truth the world's actually okay yeah it's possible that she's not, that they themselves are not aware and awakened to what's going on. And, you know, everybody's having their own time. And you would mm -hmm. think, okay, mm -hmm. they they might be in a position where they would be better in, in terms, better aware in terms of that. Mm -hmm. But obviously she, this is where the parents are trying to find what works for her because she's going through something. She's misunderstood because neurodivergent um people are misunderstood the planet the people on the planet the powers that should not be for example uh, this includes schools and doctors and that did mm -hmm. not understand what these people have come to do here they have come to do amazing things on the planet they've come with more of their um ascension tool well they they don't need ascension tools because they've come already in a higher level uh, you know uh, in a higher um vibrational states so um hopefully yeah, well, that changes for her i don't know if i can agree with that in the sense that if they if her vibrational state is based on fear then she's not in a higher vibrational state yeah but you but you see the point is my point about it is that ignorance is what projects that they if we are if we are truly there's a lot of parents that aren't aware of what their children have come to do here they've looked at it and thought it's a condition we can dumb it down with medicine. We can we can try and do whatever. And what they haven't realized is that yes, they need to change their whole lives for this for this unusual child that is here. 
but there's other ways to to get them to express because it's like anything you can you can mm-hmm. say i i use energy healing but i can use it for for bad too right for example yeah, yeah. you don't have to use it for good so yeah well hopefully they're waking up too because everybody is <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, well yeah hopefully and uh and i just want to say one more thing about what some people do with fear is they deny the fear and men are particularly good with this, but I don't think it's just a male thing. It's that it's that whole thing of, um, you know, the, the the Kiwi idea of I oh, should be right. Yeah, I could worry about that. No, but she'll be right. <laughs> and uh, um, and I I know I used to, and basically it's a fear of feeling vulnerable. Yes. And men men are particularly terrible about that. They hate. And in feel- Kiwi land, very much so. They Kiwi don't want to yeah. ever. Frank yeah. confronted. Yeah. yeah. So that so rather than be vulnerable, uh, they they basically deny that they're scared at all, and that's actually just covering it up. Yeah. You st- you have to actually face what's what's coming. You have to face it in order to know what to do, mm. and uh, to deny it's there is uh, it's not going to be good. Yeah. Mm. And. Um, so I wanted to like just that whole idea of so what do you do with fear, and uh, so I think it's good to ask some questions, and I've got some questions here that uh, the you know anybody can ask. You know, just I think I've just got them in one section. I've got my notes. Um, now, when in our lives have we found we needed to listen to being afraid? So we need to actually honor fear, that feeling of fear, and so there's nothing wrong with it. Yes, it you can can make you feel vulnerable, and it's you know we need to know it's safe to feel vulnerable. That's the only way through vulnerability is knowing it's safe, because then you can actually, if you know you can, it's okay to feel vulnerable, then you can see what you're actually dealing with emotionally. Yes. So, so when have we found we actually needed to listen to it? And so people could just write these questions down and just keep them at hand. So when you're um. And even answer them for yourself, really, so you can get a context on this. And the other one is, when did we not listen to it? So when did I not listen to fear? I know certain um, investments I made uh, that lost money, I did. I was concerned that they weren't going to work, and I just didn't listen. Oh, the fear was there. I heard it. <laughs> I heard it, and I said, oh, no, it'll be right. Yeah, I was going to say, you probably say, oh, no, no, that, it should work out. It should be fine. No, yeah, yeah that's exactly how that played out in that yep. one. And uh, and uh, when when did we not, didn't, when did we need to not listen to it, but we actually did? So when was there times when um, we didn't, there was a, a fear going on in our bodies. We, we didn't really need to listen to it, but we did, and it made things worse. Yeah. And uh, when did we listen to it? When When did we need to listen to it, but we didn't? And that was like for me in that investment, um, I really needed to listen to that. And I really needed to honor that, oh, there's some serious vulnerability here that I need to pay attention to. And it is the whole idea is the fear coming from the big M mind warning us that, no, that's actually not the right step to take on this path. So is the fear coming from that mind or is it coming from the small M mind that said, oh, um, you know, you'll be ostracized for doing that. But actually, maybe that's still the best thing to do. Yeah, it's having the courage to say I don't feel good about this, and say yeah. oh, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't feel good about this because it, you know, it's not making me feel easy. If I yeah. felt com- totally comfortable about it, it'd be one thing. Yeah, it's knowing yourself too, right? It's knowing yourself and reading your sig- mm-hmm. your signals actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And that takes time. You know, Part so- of the journey. That's yeah. all part of the journey, and um, we're on. We're, it's you know the world is on a major journey at the moment, so we've got to embrace it. You know, to deny it, it's <laughs> it's just going to be a bumpy ride. It's, something's going to happen, and you're just going to be seriously shocked. Yeah, uh, or you could wake up to it now and start to learn to deal with it. And uh, yeah, so, yeah. So it's about being able to appreciate fear and listen to it when it's appropriate. And on the flip side, to learn to say no to being used by it because Sorry. the amount of manipulation, manipulated fear we've got in our environment um, is just massive. 
Yes. So we need to not not willing to fall on that anymore. Hmm. Do you think? Um, I was going to ask what are the what are the uh what advice you would give to somebody to be able to listen to the 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 inner voice because I'm hearing more through this conversation. It's about knowing mm. yourself, listening yeah, to your yeah. inner voice, and the answer really is about meditation. I think and sitting and being quiet and not being yes all the time before thinking about it, right? Because we can say yes very quickly without thinking, oh, should I have said yes to that? Mm -hmm. You know? So yeah. what 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 are your thoughts? I mean, I think it's meditation and knowing yourself um, and going within. Yeah. Well, what, what do you yeah. think, Derek? Well, I think um, what we said right back, I think it was the first or second, third one maybe, because we did the seven elements, of, well, the elements of... Um, what it takes to live a healthy life and then we went straight to COVID and then we backed around yeah. uh, but whenever um, that inner voice has to come with those three things love peace and joy yeah so if it just comes with one of them then that's not enough so I don't know if you can hear a puppy Do you, can you hear a puppy yelping in the background no I can't oh good okay well I won't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> he wants to come in, doesn't he? He wants to come in. Mum's gone off for a swim and uh, he's in the dining room now. He knows I'm here. <laughs> yeah, he can hear you speaking. You're very welcome to get him in if you want to. Um, well, let me finish this thought first. Oh, no, there he goes again. There you go. Yeah, cannot say hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Boots. Hello. Hello, boy. Oh, yes, yes. He loves Look at you. He's beautiful. And oh. um, he is gorgeous, yes. And he yes. does like coming into these sessions, doesn't he? He does. Ah, <laughs> he's a doctor in Dog's World. <laughs> and a and, writer. Um, yeah, yeah. And so it, it's like it's you can feel peaceful about something without feeling joyful. And uh, so in terms of any kind of decision, I, I think you need to experience all of that. You need to, the, that's the things I've looked at in terms of helping me define, is it my small M mind talking or my big M mind? How many of those elements are present? Yeah. You know, and, um, and you really need all of it. And sometimes you just need to take time out of the decision-making process about whether you're going to take an action and go um, meditate, as you say, or I like chanting, so I you know put on some chanting tapes and uh yeah and i just lose myself in that spirit and then at some point i get a, a, a direction yes so that's how i just it's about not being forced to make a decision now because we are eternal beings and mm. i just get myself in a space where i can uh, see reality more clearly yes yes mm. Mm. yeah we're just having a little bit of uh issues with sound at the moment um it just there, there was a bit of interference there so i do apologize if it's coming through um to anybody who's watching um so Derek, i wanted to, i wanted to share a story mm -hmm. uh, if you said what you needed to say i wanted to share a story about fear yeah. and I, I thought i would do this because this is a real life story and uh it was it was so weird how it unfolded and, and there were so many aspects to this so there's a lady who was one morning as as she was waking up or everybody in the house was waking up they realized that she was she looked like she was dying. Uh, you know, a tongue was sticking out and she she just looked like she was dying. And so they called the ambulance and the ambulance came over and they thought they said, well, it looks like your your mother is dying. She's in a, this. This is a lady in like about 85 years old. It looks like she's dying. And um, we think that you need to let her be here. And uh, if she's going to die, the best place she's going to be in is here. And we won't take her to the hospital because if we take her to the hospital, it's like a pointless it's, it's, it's pointless in the sense that, you know, uh, she's dying. So, you know, we think we, she should be here. So the family were adamant that they take her to the hospital. I mean, from an, uh, one perspective, you can understand what the ambulance attendants were doing. Uh, okay, somebody's on their comfort, uh, comfortable home and all of that. And on the other hand as well, we, we, we have something called human rights and should that person not be given the option to, <laughs> to get some medical attention and be revived? So, you know, that's my limited knowledge of this, that human rights that I'm talking about. But anyway, so the, her children insisted that the ambulance take her into hospital, went into hospital. She was revived. She came back home. And 
the reason for the children now it was a good thing that they it was a good uh, well I, sh I won't say i know it was a good thing i don't know if it was a good thing because who knows what what that soul is doing but it was the children insisting on the mother being taken to the hospital here were the reasons they couldn't they didn't want to die at home because they one of the daughter's husband husband had died about two years ago and he died in the house and she went through that experience and she was afraid to go through the death experience again with her mother dying at home and then when her when the lady's husband had died um the hospital he had died in hospital and the hospital had called the house to say that he passed away and they spoke to one of the younger children or grandchildren and the hospital whoever was relaying this message didn't care that it wasn't an adult they were speaking no. to they told this young yeah. child the grandfather yeah. had passed away yes so they didn't so they didn't want that to happen because this child was going to for fear of what was going to happen to this child and and her I, I was thinking you could have just let your mother stay home if she was going to die isn't it better for her to be home and die amongst the people that love her and in the place that she's comfortable with but it was just an example of fear and I thought I thought about the teachings of Joe Dispenza when he talks about how we live our lives. We make decisions based on a replay of something of the past, of the programming of the mind. Because here we were, we had, for example, the daughter whose husband had died because she'd had that experience. She just didn't want to go through the death experience again in her in a in a in a family by letting her mother die at home, where she would have probably been the best would have probably been the best place for her to die. Um, she was letting that govern her whole life. And that is what she's going to be living with now. This is the way she's going to, be, that's the platform she's going to be living with now. It just made me think how we get experiences, how we have experiences. And then we, we base ever, all our realities based on that. And we won't live life. We were fearful to live life in a way that is like, okay, I had that experience. Let me deal with that. My personal experience. We now want to control everything else that's happening around us because of that experience. I think that is like oh, loaded. So don't you? Yeah. With well, the fear I mean, factor. We're so estranged from death. You know, began this session with me uh, elbow deep and and awful. You know, hearts and kidneys, yeah. and stomach fat, and um, you know, I, I I think we need to get comfortable with death. But for some people, that's really hard. Really and, hard. Um, I know. I I helped went and nursed my mum for the last two and a half months of her life and helped her die at home. And uh, that was just a blessing. For both of absolutely us. Yeah. absolutely and yeah. so but we each have an individual relationship to that and uh, but being afraid of death is it's just something we all need to deal with we all need to deal with it's never going to go away and also once you've dealt with death and i don't say i, I say this i say this without being I'm not the expert on it or anything like that. I've experienced, you know, I've experienced a person passing away, a, a parent passing away. I've experienced a husband passing away. And we will, and, and then I look back at it and I think, wow, how did this all happen? And I think, well, I've made my peace with it. I've come to realize that certain things had to happen to be mm -hmm. for me to be where I'm at, you know? And yeah. so I, feel, so I don't say things lightly when I say it is, when I agree with this, that we need to start being easy about death. We need to realize that that physical death is not a complete death. It's not gone forever. Yeah. We yeah, are not. Until, yeah, yeah, until you have some kind of sense of uh, your consciousness going on beyond the body, uh, that's a difficult thing. It's a difficult thing. It yeah. is a difficult thing. And it's also, we've been, you know, this story that I mentioned, the, the people are very Christian. They are focused on life big Christianity stuff, you know, like they're very um, into doing things diligently by the Bible. And um, there again, you know, Jesus said some things about death and uh, it's, and perhaps we just don't fathom. And I, I'm, I'm guilty of that. Well, not guilty, but I'm, I'm been known to not understand what he really said about death. I understand it now. Um, in this last couple of weeks, there's been a lot of deaths around people I know. Yeah, and, us too. Yeah, and sadly, there was a 22-year-old that committed suicide. There was a, um, a, a man in his late 70s that committed suicide. Mm. And, um, and then someone very close to me locationally, I don't even know these people personally, but, I, I you know, they live right near where I do. And there was a death in the family and a 53-year-old 
daughter passed away. And there were the parents now, late 80s, having to bury their daughter. Mm. And she left behind a 30-year-old son. I was crying about it. Yeah. So I'm not mm. I'm not into any of the... I don't even know these people personally, like on a, on a huge scale or anything like that. But I was crying for the sadness of it. Mm. And I've been saying to my... I think for me, it's not about fear of where that person's going. I think the person who's leaving is is going to pure positive energy. That's my belief. But I think for the ones that are left behind and the sorrow of it, and that not all of us are awakened to what death is all about, or that it's nothing to fear. Yeah, yeah. It's a big ask for humanity, though. <laughs> the fear, <laughs> not to fear it, right? Given what we've, we've been through, given what we've been taught to fear. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. We've been taught to fear it. We haven't been taught not to fear it. Exactly. And exactly. That, that's where we need to take more responsibility for those feelings of fear and uh, yeah. figure out which ones we need to follow through on and which ones we need to um, look in the eye and say, sorry, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, exactly. And I think with current times, there's so much that's coming out. You know, the, the, the thing is, just it's just important for people to, to realize that desperate times are calling for desperate measures when it comes to the powers that should not be. Mm -hmm. So, so basically, that's it. The next one, the next thing that's coming up after global warming is going to be the alien invasion. <laughs> I don't know how they're going. How are they going to pull that one off? I mean, and it's it's, it's bizarre. I've already seen something today <laughs> that talked about oh, um, we we are so we are likely to be under attack from uh, from you know from aliens, and it's like, but that's actually not going to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, if if um if aliens are real, they can certainly take us out. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and they don't need us, us to that whole thing around uh, whether we if if the, if they're telling you that there's an emergency and we need to bind together and do it to to stop this now, then we know that's a sign that that's coming from them. That's not any aliens. That's that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Stephen Greer's conference in June. Now, I know you don't always agree with all his uh, climate yeah. stuff, but I meant to say that it was in his climate, uh, in that conference that he talked about, or or maybe when he spoke to Michael Sandler, that he, he's actually speaking a lot more about climate like Greg Radon is now. Yeah. So, so he's sort of, he's, he's obviously come to realize that what we're being blamed for is actually what they're doing, not what we are not, not anything we're doing. But anyway, he had said in June that they will come up with this stuff where... Hang on, uh, man. I don't know no. if you can hear this. we got a mad puppy. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Please, <laughs> Thank you, everyone. You know, this is what happens, right? And that's our culture, our Zoom culture. It's great to have the pets in all the videos, though. That's what I think. Yeah, absolutely love it. And anyway, Boots is so cute. Why wouldn't we want to have him here in the videos? <laughs> no, no, I'm just going to try to ignore him. He's just running around like a mad rabbit. Is, 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 he, having, is he doing his Zoomies then? He is, yeah, and Sasha's trying to. <laughs> try to control them <laughs> he knows so so how old is boots now oh uh, he's just over a year um so he's still very puppy isn't he he is yeah oh he likes <laughs> the attention right <laughs> yeah yeah he's got he's got Sasha's trying to lead him out oh that's okay that's all right mm -hmm. i could yeah, hear um, something going on in the background saying about stephen greer yeah. and about this upcoming thing he's talking about yeah so he he is already warned at that conference that just be aware that there's going to be some big scare that's good. They're going to make an attempt to tell us that we're under, you know, we are being invaded or yeah, we are yeah. being under attack <clears throat> by the galactic community. And uh, so this is going to be this big attempt to all bind us together again, bond us together and bind us together as if we think, oh, no, no, we need to stand up now and fight. But, yeah. you know, we, many of us have already had connections with our galactic family, our starseed <laughs> families. We already have. We already know about them being out there, orbiting and watching us, and looking out for us, and and and, and rooting for us to awaken to the realities that are going on around us, mm -hmm. and not buy into the lies and not be fearful. So they are here for higher purpose. So yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, so, yeah, and I, I think someone said a couple of weeks ago the U.S. government announced that there <laughs> are aliens on Earth, but, well, <laughs> okay. All right, let's well, move on then. Next you came out in the news. How about that? <laughs> yeah, and, and I understand. I was listening to Michael Sandler yesterday because Michael Sandler did a podcast about two days ago where he was actually talking about the congressional hearings. So there's mm -hmm. congressional something called the congressional hearings or something happening in the United States where uh, military personnel, there are two or three military personnel that are giving testimony about stuff concerning um, UFOs and, um, uh, well, you know, we say UFOs here. I do not like that word. I do not like UFOs because... Mm. I think it's a, it's also a word that is meant to frighten us uh, and make us feel, oh, that's alien, that's to be scared of. And um, But anyway, the, the congressional hearings, there are these top-ranking officers that are talking about alien abduction, what has been going on in the background, what kind of projects are happening, where here on Earth, where the, the, the powers that should not be are actually... And they talked a lot about the the um, the shadow government being involved in things where they're bringing down alien aircrafts and stuff like that. So this is what's going on. I, I, did you know this this was happening in the United States? I knew, yeah, I knew that. Basically, this you know they they tried to keep the um, I think they're calling them UAPs now, um, un, unidentified aerial phenomenon, <laughs> and. Um, that it was it was always a hush hush. It was just a just all a you know just a conspiracy theory, <laughs> and now it's coming out of the realms of conspiracy theories. Oh no, we do have these. Remember they released those photos or those aerial shots of um, yep. uh, the, you know these things that moved around like crazy in front of military aircraft, and uh, so they they've been releasing that and they're drip feeding us information. Um, and you've got to think about what are they doing that for. And if they ever do pull something and we get told we need to be afraid of this, then we need to pay attention. That's not anything to be afraid of. Exactly. Yeah. Um, when I watched the conference, I only watched one day's worth of conference, although Stephen Greer had, had three. I, I couldn't get I couldn't get the time to watch the others because mm -hmm. they were like pretty long. Yeah, yeah. Um, they said how you identify what is what is a, a like you know an, a, a galactic aircraft i'm calling it galactic aircraft they would probably say alien mm -hmm. aircraft. galactic mm -hmm. aircraft as to one that was created on earth the ones that are created on earth have got aerials they, they've got antenna mm -hmm. they've got some things that are, are different the ones that come from the galactic community do not have those things because they don't need to they are so advanced and um you know just just be aware that this is this is a possibility that could happen and also i mean when have they not disappointed us when i think about it when have they not disappointed us the only thing that they that is disappointing is that they do it first and then they tell us later um and then they act like it's only happening now when it's not it's been happening mm -hmm. for a long time you know like this thing about geoengineering and uh oh we're gonna ask, you know this thing about uh blocking uh, deflecting the sun's rays i mean I think they've already been doing it. I don't. I think it's just a document that was released recently to say that they're going to do that, mm -hmm. but they've already been doing it. So I think we need to be just vigilant and keep ourselves in a good space to say, I'm not going to fear things. I'm going to find out what I can do to keep myself safe, to keep myself. And, and the best way to do, the best empowering you can ever do for yourself is to do the meditations, to get within yourself and understand that you have who you are Get to know who you are, what you come, what your DNA has, any person. And know that the reason we are being dumbed down like that and the reason they're trying their best to control us is because of how unique we are, how empowering and empowered we are. We ourselves don't know that. So that's uh, amnesia. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, Tarek, anything else before we go? Oh, just this uh, little poem by, I think it's a lady, Rainer Maria Rilke. She said, let everything happen to you. Don't deny it. Beauty and terror, just keep going. No feeling is final. Wonderful. That's mm. beautiful. Right. Thank you.
Anything else? Uh, looking forward to anger next week. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We'll catch you next time here on The Great Awakening Generator. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.